for all the homesteaders out there, I'd like to talk about instinct versus training. Something that can be hotly debated. But I don't really care about hotly debating anything. I just care about getting the job done and staying out of any kind of firestorm. So I'm just sharing what we do here and how we utilize Livestock Guardian Dogs and enjoy them and deal with problems. And one real common problem is sometimes, dark, dirty little secret, Livestock Guardian Dogs sometimes chase, kill, eat the livestock. And we can hotly debate, oh, no, badly bred dogs, ah. And, you know, maybe, you know, maybe that's the case, right? And um, and then you should rehome your dog or put the dog down for faulty genetics or, you know, whatever people want to say. And, you know, I, I could understand if, if I was a sheep producer and this was my livelihood, but this is not my livelihood. This is just something I do for fun. And we do enjoy lamb and we enjoy growing our own food. And we enjoy the meals we create from what we grow here very much. And so we just kind of have evolved into a situation where, of course, I train my dogs but my ex- and I know some people will be like, "Oh, you should be able to train your dogs, tell your dogs what to do," and that's great. But you know, I have I know how to train my dog, and some dogs just have a certain instinct, and you need your dog to be absolutely trustworthy when you're not around. Okay, so for pet dogs where you can have them in the crate if you're not available to supervise, you know, yeah, you're in charge of the pack. They will do what you say. They look to you for leadership. That's great. But these are livestock guardian dogs, right? And I, I'll be honest, I'm using them in a way that might be a little bit not exactly what they were bred for. Not exactly. Because I think a sheep producer or someone who actually relies on their livestock for their livelihood, I get it. There's a whole different set of requirements and what you need from your dog. And you may not have the time to just have like a quasi-pet sometimes work kind of situation and then you rehome your dog. And that's fine. That's fine. But these videos are for people who are kind of like homesteaders, hobby farmers, people who just like doing it. You know, they're not really making their livelihood from this. So there's a lot less at stake. So they're able to be a little bit more flexible with the dogs that they have. Well, that's what we do. I have Pearl and I have attempted to train and ask Pearl not to chase livestock and uh, she has demurred those requests. So if I'm not available to supervise, if I have her out during the day, I have her on tie down. So she gets to lay out in the sun. It's a beautiful day. It's been raining pretty hard, and so it's nice that she gets a little bit of out time in the sun. Uh, meanwhile, her sister, not the same litter, but, you know, same parents, Annie has proven to be very reliable in that she does not chase the stock and all of this goofy, fun goose movement does not trigger her. And so I like to leave her out during the day. I work with the dogs that I have. So Annie's great being out alone, unsupervised. Yay. She also tends to not bother the neighbors. Yay. Awesome. Bonnie and Doc, who are the naughty, naughty, push it, push it dogs. I have them, I had them working all night long. So I am giving them the morning in the hallway to rest and recuperate. 
and then later I will have them out in the sun under supervision because they are the dogs that go to the neighbors and cause the problems. So it works out. And I just wanted to share because there's more than one way to skin a cat. Or there's more than one way to butcher chicken. There's more than one way. I don't know who came up with skin the cat. That's kind of weird. But um, but yeah. So it's really just about you know what you actually need done, and which dog will do it, without pushing the boundaries, without fighting. I guess against their own instincts to chase things, and it's just. A way of doing things where if you don't want to rehome your dogs and you're not, I mean, I'll be honest, you're not a actual, you know, producer for a commercial purpose. Because then, of course, you would need something way more reliable and more than one reliable dog. Because <laughs> right now, out of all the dogs I have, I really only have one. It seems like I always have one reliable dog. Yep. And so right now it's Annie. And um, yeah, I'm grateful and I hope this helps and happy homesteading, y'all.